Hi, boys and girls. This week we're going to continue with Abraham Lincoln, but first we've got new words to go over with. And again, you're going to have to really study hard because we've got vowels all over the place. It's our beginning blends that we're working on. So this, this week we have st, st, we have stark, stack, stamp, we have sp, sp, speak, sport, spoke. Then we have three together. str, str strap, strong, strand. And we have spl, spl, splash, spleen, splint. Let's go over these again. Stark, stack, Stamp, speak, sport, spoke, strap, strong, strand, splash, spleen, splint. Now, we're going to start with our new vocabulary words that we added. The first one we're going to add this week is challenges. And challenges are things that make things harder for us, okay? For instance, um, sometime, last week we had a lot of bad weather, and so that was a challenge for buses to being able to run, and so we weren't able to have school. Um, the pandemic has made some challenges for us figuring out how to do school. It's made things harder, but not impossible. So let's continue with our biography on Abraham Lincoln by Augusta Stevenson. Changes in the family. One night, a little girl and two boys sat in the Lincoln cabin and looked into the fire. They were alone in the cabin, and the great dark forest was like a wall of darkness that shut them in and held them fast. Abe, now ten and a half, and Sarah was past twelve. The boy who was staying with them was several years older. For a long time, they didn't say anything. They just sat on stools and looked into the fire. All of them seemed unhappy. At last, Sarah said, it's lonesome here. It's mighty lonesome, said Abe. I guess you miss your mother, said the older boy kindly. Yes, I do, cousin Dennis, said Sarah. So do I, said Abe. I miss her too, said Dennis. Look how she had me come here and live when my mother died, and she was always good to me too. She was good to everyone, said Sarah. No one else could be so good, said Abe. I'm glad that you are here, Dennis, said Sarah. I'm sorry that the cabin isn't as clean as Mother kept it. She looked at the untidy room. You work too hard, Sarah, said Dennis. I wish I could help you more. I bring in the water and the wood, said Abe. You both do all you can, Sarah said quickly. You have too much work. You're yourself since father went away. We are trying to finish that rail fence before he gets back, Dennis said. We want to surprise him, said Abe. He said he wouldn't be gone long, but it's been a month today, said Sarah. So we've introduced a new character. We have cousin Dennis who's staying with us, and we know that mom, mother died, but father has been gone for a month and left these three kids all by themselves in the wilderness where there's no one else. That's a little scary. That isn't long, said Abe. He had to walk, and it's a hundred miles to Knob Creek. And a hundred miles back, Dennis added with a laugh. But Sarah didn't even smile. Anyway, I think it's queer he went away and left us alone, she said. It is queer, said Dennis. Queer means strange. Abe didn't say anything, but he thought it was queer, too. Then they stopped talking and looked into the fire again. It burned low. It's time to go to bed, said Sarah. Good night, said Dennis, and up the pegs he went to the loft. Good night, said Abe, and he followed Dennis. Sarah went to bed in the untidy room below. All was quiet in the cabin. Now the forest began to speak its language of sounds and warnings. An owl hooted, and Sarah hid her head under the quilt. A wildcat screamed, and Abe kept closer to Dennis in their bed of leaves. What the big wagon brought. Another day went by, and then another, and another. Still, Mr. Lincoln didn't return, and the three children were alone. But they went on with their work, the boys in the woods splitting rails, and Sarah in the cabin doing housework. She tried hard to get good meals for Abe and Dennis,
but nothing she cooked was just right. The mush was too thin, the corn cakes were too hard, the meat was either burned or raw. She tried to wash the heavy bedclothes, but she couldn't lift them. She tried to sew and mend, but the clothes didn't look right. She was discouraged. Every day she cried and cried. Then suddenly everything was changed. One morning a big wagon came through the woods to the Lincoln cabin. The wagon was drawn by four horses. Out of the cabin rushed Sarah. Out of the woods rushed Dennis and Abe. Out of the wagon jumped Thomas Lincoln. He's back. Children, he said, I have brought you a present from Kentucky. I have brought you a new mother. A tall, pretty woman jumped from the wagon and ran toward them. She had fair, curly hair and the sweetest smile. Children, she cried, children. With that, she hugged and kissed them. She told them that they were her children now and she had come to take care of them. You will be just like my own children to me, she said. You are all about the same age and you will have a good time together. Then this lively lady turned toward the wagon and called, John, Matilda, Sarah. At once, the three Johnston children jumped from the wagon and smiled at Abe and Sarah and Dennis. And Abe and Sarah and Dennis smiled at John, Matilda, and Sarah Johnston. And here's a picture of them meeting their new mother. It's an exciting day. Now, children, said Mrs. Lincoln, please take everything out of the wagon and carry it into the cabin. Six happy young people began to unload the big wagon. There were great bundles of feather beds, pillows, quilts, wool coverlets, sheets, towels, and clothing. The Lincoln children and Dennis were amazed to see so many things. The bureau is next, called Mrs. Lincoln, and do please be careful. My goodness, said Sarah Lincoln. A bureau? I have never saw one before. That's like a dresser. John, Dennis, and Abe carried it into the cabin. Sarah would have thought they were carrying eggs. They were so careful. It's beautiful, said Abe. It makes the cabin look fine, said Dennis. Wait till you see the chairs, said Matilda. They have backs. Backs, cried Sarah, Abe, and Dennis. They ran to the wagon, and soon six chairs stood in the cabin. Six chairs with backs. Oh, how beautiful, cried Sarah Lincoln. It's the finest cabin on Pigeon Creek now, isn't it, boys? It is, said Abe. It is, Dennis agreed. How that new mother worked, here, there, and everywhere, just like the general of an army, and she had her army working too. Clean clothes went on the beds, dishes, knives, forks, and spoons were scoured. That means cleans. Pots and pans were scoured. The table, benches, and stools were scrubbed. Soon everything was so clean, it just couldn't be any cleaner. Next, Mrs. Lincoln began on Sarah and Abe. Soon they were so clean, they just couldn't be any cleaner. Then she gave Sarah a pretty new dress. She gave Abe new shirts and trousers. She gave both of them new shoes, not moccasins, shoes. She made two sad children so happy that they didn't know themselves. That night, Abe and Dennis slept on a feather bed in the loft. Clean pillows under their heads and clean quilts covered them. How happy and comfortable they were. How Abe loved this new mother. And that wasn't all. Mrs. Sarah Johnston Lincoln told Mr. Thomas Lincoln that she wanted wooden a wooden floor, windows, and a door. And she told him so plainly he couldn't misunderstand, so he just went to work and made them. Now, I can draw a conclusion here. We know that they have a, wag a new wagon from a different places, and we know they have extra horses. We know that they have new clothes and new bedding, and we know that they have new furniture. And now the new mother is asking Mr. Lincoln to make the cabin better. So I can conclude that she is from a richer family and she's used to having nicer things. She's not used to living, roughing it the way they had been in the wilderness. So I think some changes are coming for these kids. Never again was that cabin a lonely place. Six children helped with the work. Six children laughed and talked. Six children popped corn, roasted apples and cracked nuts. But best of all to Sarah and Abe was to have that new kind mother. Mrs. Lincoln looks ahead. Thomas, said Abe's stepmother, Abe must go to school. But he knows his letters, Sarah. He can read and spell a little. Very little, said Mrs. Lincoln. He hasn't been to school since you moved to Indiana, and that was, <coughs> excuse me, and that was three years ago. There wasn't any school near enough. There is now, right here on Pigeon Creek, and Abe ought to go. He is 11 years old. Oh, Abe is getting along all right. He can work as well as a man, said Thomas Lincoln. Work isn't everything, Thomas. It's enough for Abe. He'll always be a farmhand. He can't do anything else. 
You can't tell me that, Thomas Lincoln. Abe is smart. He loves books and he remembers everything. He can tell every story he ever heard. I know he can do that, said Thomas. He can even tell what the preacher said at meeting. Then Thomas laughed and laughed. What are you laughing at, asked Sarah. Why, well, said Thomas, yesterday that boy got up on a stump in the cornfield and preached. Preached? You don't mean to say Abe preached? I do, said Thomas. He thought he was alone, but I was in the woods and I hid behind a tree and listened. Then Mr. Lincoln laughed again. Go on, go on, said Sarah. Very well, said Thomas. Abe acted exactly like the preacher. He made motions like the preacher. He coughed like the preacher. And he actually preached like him too. How could he preach, asked Mrs. Lincoln. He didn't have anyone to preach to. He preached to the cornstalk, Sarah, and he preached last Sunday's sermon. Did he remember it? He remembered it better than I did. Abe is the smartest boy I know, said Sarah. He's too smart, said Thomas. He can imitate the preacher exactly, and he's funny when he does it. But the preaching has to stop. It takes him away from his work. Thomas, let Abe go to school this winter. He wants to learn. He'll study hard. I can't spare him this winter, Sarah. Some land must be cleared for a new field. We need more bread for such a large family. I know we do, Thomas, but the land can be cleared in the spring. Abe can stop school when you are ready for him. You can't work through the heavy snows anyway. Well, that's true, said Mr. Lincoln, but I haven't any money, Sarah. I can't pay a schoolmaster. I'll pay him myself, said Mrs. Lincoln, with my chicken money. You seem determined, Sarah. I am determined, Thomas. Abe must have a chance to go to school. And here's a picture of Abe preaching to the corn. All right, and we'll read more tomorrow. Thanks for listening.